I can't think of anybody else in American music whose personal heritage stretches back so much and so far to the beginning of such an old and rich American tradition as Johnny Maddox. He's just the lion of American ragtime. I'm Johnny Maddox, and this is my lifetime collection of sheet music. Music that runs from late 18th century up to about 1950. I quit collecting when music ceased to be music. When you, when you lose the melody, you lose me. When I started on the road in 1950, I would go to all places, towns, big and little, and I'd haunt the bookshops and uh, look for old music. I don't think that there is any private collection in the United States anywhere that starts to equal the collection that Johnny Maddox has amassed. Uh, 225,000 pieces of sheet music, 20,000 recordings, all pre-LP recordings, I'm 84 years old. I can't take care of it anymore, and uh, I would love to get it out from my house and get it where it can be shared by students, people who are interested in this old music. I want it kept intact. I want it to stay in the state of Tennessee for Tennesseans or whoever is interested in it, where they can go and look at it. So it's a treasure trove of Americana. It's a treasure trove of the music that matters most to Americans. I've played this thing so much it's about worn out, I'm sure. It's often the case that people will become fascinated with recordings. And recordings start up in the 1890s, they become important in the, in the first decade of the 20th century and very important by the second decade. But Johnny's interested in that span of commercial music from sheet music and its publication up to recording and how they join and how they overlap in there. Uh, I think that's, it's important to recognize that commercial music making didn't start with the recordings and it didn't stop with the end of the sheet music industry in the 1920s and the 1930s. Johnny sees it all and he's collected it all, he appreciates it all, he sees it as a whole and that's important. What do you think of that? Another aspect of Johnny uh, and his collection is that he's not just a collector, but he's a lover of his collection. He knows everything in it. This one right here, this is Lou Dockstadter's Minstrels, the, the Confederate battle flag march. This wonderful copy I have of Here's Your Mew, a piece of music called The Rock Beside the Sea. Joan of Arc, they are calling you. And here's another copy of Here's Your Mew. There are 200,000 pieces of music there. He probably is familiar with at least half of those. He can whistle them, he can look at the cover and tell you what antique store he found it in. <laughs> you can ask him a question about a piece and he can lay his hands on it in 30 seconds. So he's not simply somebody who's acquired a bunch of things. He's acquired a bunch of knowledge as a result of the things he has acquired. And that makes him an important resource as well as his collection.
my great hope is that it would still be an expression of Johnny Maddox. It would still be intact. That it would be held together as a monument to this person. And I would hope that it would also stay in Tennessee because Johnny is so much a part of Tennessee and that collection is an expression of who he is. My day is over with. My day is gone. And I don't regret it. I've had wonderful, wonderful memories. So to preserve this collection is to preserve our collective identity. The present is constantly being made by the past. We are always the old made new as human beings, but also as cultural beings. And this collection uh, represents the opportunity to know who we were then in order to better know who we are now. Thank you.